Hey everybody, it's Karen and Stephanie with Food and Family. Are you getting ready for St. Patrick's Day? We are, and we have got some delicious stuff for you today. We are going to make an Irish stew. Yeah, Irish, uh, it's a Guinness beef stew. Beef stew. And Stephanie is cutting up a, was it about two and a half pounds, choke roast. We've got six ounces of bacon cut up in cubes that we're browning here. So we're about ready to take it out and she's gonna throw that beef in and we're gonna get it browned up. This is gonna come together really quick. The longest is gonna the longest it's going to take you is cutting up the vegetables. And, the cooked, and then it's cook time. Yeah, and then it's cook time. And then you can put it on the stove. We're going to start it here, move it to the stove. But you can put it on the stove, let it simmer. What do you say, two or three hours? Because you want that meat to be really tender. tender. And chuck roast, and many of you may know this, chuck roast is tough if it's not cooked correctly. The key to cooking a tender chuck roast is low and slow. slow and long. So you cook it for a long time. I cook a roast three hours, may go four, and um, it will be falling apart tender. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out, Stephanie, because they're getting browned. All right, and so while she's doing that, we're cook, cutting up the chuck roast in about one inch, what did you say, one inch pieces? One, one and a half inches, so, yeah. She has her chuck roast cut up, and she's going to salt and pepper it and toss it in her flour. And she's only got three tablespoons of flour. That's all that's needed. You don't want a heavy coating. This is just enough flour that it's going to help thicken the stew and um and if anybody's worried about the guinness the alcohol cooks away um it just leaves a flavor it's a stout and it's just going to leave a dark rich flavor so you don't have to worry about the alcohol oh that looks so good see in these three tablespoons of flour coated perfectly coats her chunks of meat here perfect and she can hold it up and let you see how beautifully it's coated it's just a light dusting mm. and see how beautiful that is i'm gonna go ahead and add some salt and pepper on there for you yes so we're gonna go ahead we're just gonna eyeball it we're just, and we may add some more salt as we go. Keep in mind, we, we're gonna be using broth and it is salted. So I could not find the unsalted beef broth today. And um, the Guinness is gonna give it a flavor. And if we say we need some more salt, we can add it and you can always add it at, your, at the table on your plate. All right, we're gonna start adding our meat so you start the browning process. You don't want to add it all at one time because you want them all to get evenly browned and have a good coating. So you'll, you'll want to do this part in stages. Yeah, if you crowd your pan, you're going to have gray meat. And you'll lower your temperature of your oil. Yeah, and there's nothing less appealing than gray meat. Gray meat. We were at a restaurant one time. I was having some issues with allergies. And we were at a restaurant where they were cooking shellfish along with um, everything else. And it's not so much the shellfish as it is the seasonings they use that bother me. And we asked them, could they do it separately? And they said, yeah, no problem. This was a steakhouse. They came out and served me a steak that was gray cooked on a piece of aluminum foil. That was the worst steak dinner I've ever had. Yeah, there's two medium onions. We use three ribs of celery and three carrots. 
And if you wanted to use more, you can. And we cut them, um, the celery and the carrots in about, what is that, about half an inch? Yeah, I would say close to half an inch. But if you want more, you can add more. That's going to be up to you. This is going to be so good. It already smells good. Mm -hmm. So let us get this beef browned, and we're going to take it out and get our onions in the pot and get them cooked up a little bit with the celery and carrots, and we're just going to start adding everything else. So, all right, we're back here. Now, we changed your angle so you could see down into the pot and see what we're fixing to do. This meat's about ready to come up. You see how she's got it browned? And uh, it is so, if y'all could just smell it. It is smelling so good. Now we're gonna add these onions into the pot and oh my goodness, look at here. Isn't that beautiful? So it's not done, but it will finish cooking because we're gonna simmer it, what, two, three hours? Mm -hmm. All right. So, so I'm she's just adding a couple of tablespoons of oil to the pan. And we got two medium sized onions. Mm. Looks like a lot, but keep in mind it will cook down. And to that, we're going to add, if you've got these minced, wet minced garlic. You're gonna add three teaspoons or three garlic cloves. And don't drip, uh, drain all the juice off when you pull it out of here. That's some good the flavor. Juice is the best part. That is some good flavor when you add it in there. <clears throat> mm. Now I think we'll go ahead and add our tomato paste and our carrots and our celery. Well, what do you that. think? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rake the onions back to the side and I'll put one, two, three, four tablespoons. I just eyeballed it. And that's gonna be as close to four tablespoons as you can get. Now that's gonna to toast that up a little bit. Been in there and it's gonna bring out all those flavors and that tomato paste, it's gonna waken it up because it's been sitting dormant. And then it's gonna just wake up and say, hey, I'm here, I'm happy. Welcome Let's to the party. <laughs> Welcome to the party, absolutely. And that's what we want. Well, let's just spread it all out across there. All right, we're going to add mm. the three ribs of celery that we did a half inch cut. And again, if you want more than that, by all means. Three carrots, half inch cut. You can add more. Isn't, isn't that pretty? Isn't that just a beautiful pot already? Those colors down in there. And we're going to let that sit there. Um, we're going to add... <clears throat> oh, yes, we've got to add some thyme. All right, so you can do three sprigs of fresh thyme. We're going to add half a teaspoon of the dry. Dry seasonings, your dry herbs are a lot stronger than your fresh. If you have fresh, get it. I was at the store and they didn't have any fresh. So that's why I got the dried. Doesn't matter. Mm. Quiet it down for just a minute, so we're going to let it start. Get that temperature that. back up. Yeah, get the temp back up and let that cook a minute. And All right, it's dump time. Let's dump. <clears throat> All right, bacon. Six ounces of bacon that we already cooked up. 
Mmm. We're gonna put the, the meat back in. Looky there. And don't leave those juices in the dish. Rake them out. There's a lot of flavor there. And did you say two bay leaves? I think two or three. They're not real big. So if you want to go with three. <clears throat> yeah, because see they're this one's kind of small, so we'll we'll use an extra one. All right, there's two cups of broth there. Mm. See how she's pouring her broth from the top there? If you do it that way, then it won't splatter all over you. Your good friend Leslie taught us that this week. Yeah. Well, I already knew it, but she... I uh, didn't. <laughs> you didn't. Yeah. All right. And now it's time for the, the Guinness. The Guinness. 14.9 ounces of Guinness. How did we come up with 14.9? Let's just say 15 ounces of Guinness. <laughs> See how rich that's making it? It deepened the color. Can you see so that one of these was what? 11. Okay. 11.5. So about, I would say about a quarter. Yeah. Oh, it smells so good. It is. Yeah, and it's that simple. This is ready to just sit and cook. We're going to put a lid on it. We might cock the lid just a little bit, but we, you want to simmer. You don't want a hard rolling boil. Let's get it down on a simmer and we're going to let it cook. I would say two or three hours. Mm -hmm. So, but when it gets done, we're going to come back and we're going to try it for you. Okay. Stay with we it. just took this our stew off of the stove. And if you could smell this kitchen, it is amazing and that that meat the roast is so tender. tender you don't have to have a knife just your spoon and that's it but while we were doing that and you'll see this in another video we made some cold cannon so it's potatoes we've got kale green onions butter and cream and Nothing better. <laughs> no. So what we're going to do is, we plated us up some. We poured our stew over our potatoes. Looky there. I'm ready to try this, Stephanie. Mm. That's so good. So we don't have potatoes in the stew, like you would a beef stew we were making here. This is just carrot, celery, onions, beef, the stock, tomato paste. Oh my word. And you can eat this by itself, but let me tell you, with the hip, it is so much better. Mmm. Yeah, why would you want to? And you've got your kale. And the potatoes. You've got everything you need right here. This is a full course meal plus some. All right. We appreciate every one of you. And we certainly hope you will try our recipes. Look for this stew. When you watch the stew video, look for the cold cannon video. And you'll enjoy making it. And I think you'll really love it. And then pair them together. And you'll be so happy you did. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for watching. Share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when we put out our next video. Thanks, everybody.